With the NFL draft in the rearview mirror, all the real truths of all the negotiations start to come out. So let's go over what we've learned on the Locked On Vikings podcast. You are Locked On Vikings, your daily Minnesota Vikings podcast, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Hello, hello, everybody, and welcome to the Locked On Vikings podcast, where we're always trying to learn something new. It's part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. And thank you so much for those of you who make Locked On Vikings your first listen of the day each and every day. My hashtag everydayers, I appreciate you all so very much, especially appreciate those of you sticking around, even though we're a little bit sparser uh, this time of year. It's um, kind of the the, the post-draft lull. I'm going to be out of town soon, so I'm pre-recording a whole bunch ahead, and I appreciate you all for sticking around. If you are new here, expecting a daily show, and it's actually Monday, Wednesday, Friday, that is why, but also hello, welcome, thank you for coming out. Uh, you can find this show just locked it up. Uh, just search out "Locked On Vikings" anywhere you listen to podcasts, from apps like SiriusXM to YouTube to Amazon Fire and Roku. If you just download the Locked On Minnesota Sports app. Today's episode is brought to you by Game Time. Download the Game Time app, create an account, and use code Locked On NFL for twenty dollars off of your first purchase. Uh, so today on the show, uh, there are some interesting things being revealed. And I guess by revealed, I mean reported on by folks like Jeremy Fowler at ESPN or Tom Pellicero or Mike Reese at ESPN with, uh, was, I think the driving ESPN guy on, um, cause he covers the Patriots on like Drake May stuff. And, uh, Tom Pellicero, obviously very keyed into the Vikings, basically told the entire story on the Rich Eisen show. And that clip is out there. You can just see it, uh, on Twitter where he told the just the whole story of the Vikings like first 10 picks of the draft and kind of where their heads were at throughout all of it and and you get all these really interesting nuggets that are all sort of worth a discussion. So that's what we're going to do today. Um but to be honest, all of this is a moot point now, right? Like it's uh they've got JJ McCarthy and it is what it is and the 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 value in discussing it now is in okay, how does this sort of change the outlook on what we think the Vikings plan will be moving forward, considering what they wanted and what they got and what they didn't get. Right. So Mike Reese at ESPN, um, essentially told the story as we sort of experienced it on draft day, about an hour before the draft kicked off, we got, I think it was a Pelissero tweet. If I remember, uh, that basically said the Patriots are expected to stick and pick. They, they, they've said no to trades. um, after afterwards on the Rich Eisen show, Pelissero expounded on this, said, OK, you know, Caleb Williams crossed that name off. Jaden Daniels, most likely a commander, crossed that name off. Uh, and then at the Patriots, you know, everybody's sitting and waiting to see what they're going to do between Drake May or McCarthy or trading and that them listening to trades was real. They really did consider things. Uh, but what Mike Reese added to this was what the offer was, that it was pick 11, pick 23, the 2025 first, and that the Vikings expected to get picks back. Essentially not that different if you listen to the Locked On NFL mock draft before uh, the draft that we all did as hosts. It's basically the trade that I did to get up to four, <laughs> which I misread that horribly. Good thing I'm not a GM. Uh, but it, it was basically that. That was the offer. And that the Patriots wanted to add to that, the, that three first round picks was sort of the baseline and the Vikings wanted something back and the Patriots wanted pick more picks to go toward them. That's a lot of distance. Uh, that's not quibbling over a little day three here, a day three. That's, that's a good amount of distance between the two sides, unable to reach a deal. You pick Drake May. Uh, but what I really wanted to bring this up for was I, I, I saw a lot of people responding to that report with some version of, of an idea of like, oh, wow, you know, they didn't get their guy. They must, they, they really, they, they settled for J.J. McCarthy. Uh, and I think that that's a really naive way to look at it. I, I think that's the kind of way you, you look at like homecoming dates in 10th grade. You know, you, 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 you were, like someone would get asked, but it like wasn't, wasn't by the guy that, that, that they wanted to ask him, you know, and they could be like, ah, I guess I'll say yes to this. And you'd have like that drama. Remember that? Uh, that's 
we could be adults. I think more of a, more of adults than 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 the fifteen year olds. You know, uh, <laughs> it is abundantly clear that the Vikings really loved JJ McCarthy. Like, remember the question you're trying to ask: Was he their number one option? That was also abundantly clear the entire time. Like, we didn't learn anything new. If you didn't. Like this, that's not news that the Vikings preferred Drake May to to J.J. McCarthy. We very much knew that. And so the question has to become, is there a problem between J.J. McCarthy and the Vikings because J.J. McCarthy was QB whatever on their board and not QB one? And I think if you think that, I I, I, I got a bridge to sell you. Uh, It's just people have more open eyes than that. It's a draft. And honestly, like how many teams had Caleb Williams number one on their board, right? Well, you're not getting him. Is every other QB now going to be like pissy about that? Or can they be adults and understand that this is there's a ranking system and that we pick where we pick and, you know, we're going to get who we get and we're going to uh, we, we've got our contingencies and everything, right? This is why I, I made a really big point before the draft. I, I dedicated a whole episode to it, to the idea of of, as Quasi puts it, decision making under uncertainty. They have to make decisions not knowing what we know now. And I know that's like the most obvious thing in the world, but it's really easy to forget that when you see the information coming out now and you go, oh my God, how stupid were they? How did they not know that? It's like, okay, well, you didn't either. (laughs) Nobody did. They had to make that decision not knowing. Uh, And it's important to keep that context in mind if you're actually trying to evaluate how good or bad a decision was. Uh, So... Yeah, they had a contingency of getting Drake May. They were very happy. And here's a here's a wild, wacky thought. This is gonna blow your mind. All right, this is gonna this is the hottest take I've ever said on Lockdown Vikings. You like more than one quarterback? You'd be really happy. With, ah, I like that guy. I like that guy too. Yeah, we'll see what happens. Like that that's a totally valid take. You don't have to like pick one guy and tunnel vision on tunnel vision on him so hard that if the Patriots decide to stick and pick all you you all just like go jump into a frozen lake. Like you don't have to live like that, right? Uh it's it's just a really childish way to look at things, I think. And I don't really like that that's the way that people have have responded to that. Plus the the real impact of this. Like if we really if I really want to give that take the time of day, which I probably should, even though I think it's childish. Um my question, my follow-up question would be, okay, why would that matter? That the Vikings, you know, oh, they didn't get their guy, they got their secondary guy. Why does that matter, right? Does it imply that J.J. McCarthy is bad? You probably just think J.J. McCarthy is bad, so just say that, right? But how good Drake May is has very much nothing to do with how good J.J. McCarthy is. Those are independent variables, so it doesn't matter. Um, I liked Drake May better than J.J. McCarthy, too, but I still like J.J. McCarthy quite a bit. Like It's an independent. This is not a zero-sum game. You don't have to pick liking one or the other. You can like both. Uh, and the other thing is, you know, maybe you'll say, well, what if what if that's an issue? Like, I saw people say, like, what if yeah, what if there's a problem? What if J.J. McCarthy doesn't like it? What, what is the relationship off to the wrong foot? And I think if you think that the relationship is off to the wrong foot, I re- I, I, I'm hard-pressed to find evidence of that. I'm, I challenge you to bring me actual evidence, not, law, not you know, uh, deduction, not uh, speculation about, well, you know, hey, if I were the, for the fifth QB off the board and the team kind of didn't really want me and very clearly wanted a different guy but ended up with me, I would be kind of pissed. It's like, well, that's a you problem, bro chacho. Uh, <laughs> that's, that's not how JJ McCarthy has responded to this at all throughout the entire pre-draft process. He was enamored openly with Minnesota. He loved the idea of being in Minnesota, he wanted to be in Minnesota. Um, and afterwards, of course, take with a grain of salt, you know, what's true, what's not. But honestly, I don't know how media savvy this 21 year old is saying other, other, uh, prospects called him when he got drafted and went, ah, oh, darn, you know, I want a Minnesota, like, Everybody wanted Minnesota, but it kind of makes sense, right? You've got this incredibly QB friendly, Q, uh, QB friendly coach. You have uh, Josh McCown as QB coach, who's very well well regarded around the league, uh, even though he's new. Like whether that's earned or not, like his reputation is absolutely good. You got Justin Jefferson, right? Uh, good bookend tackles. Like it is a desirable destination. Not to mention, it's just the the facilities and the money that the Wilfs have put into things have been. Uh, a, a major positive for the reputation of the Vikings amongst players in particular. So I don't think you have to reach very hard to like believe him when he says, I 
really wanted to be in Minnesota and I'm really stoked to be in Minnesota. All that stuff matters way, unless you're like the most prideful and like arrogant little petulant man child ever. All that stuff matters way more than like, was I number one on your board? Nah, Caleb Williams is probably one on, one on everybody's board. So we can all get over this, right? I hope we can all get over this. What I found more interesting um, was from, from Pelissero's storytelling was uh, the rest of it. <laughs> the What happened after um, really shines a lot of clarity on everything we heard before the draft. And now we can kind of get a clearer picture. So that'll be next. Today's episode of Locked On Vikings is brought to you by eBay Motors. Whether your car is something that you only take out every once in a while because you work from home, whether it gets you from uh, to and from every single day to, to work, to school, to adventures and beyond, you're going to need to take care of that thing eventually. And it's also, I mean, it's like part of your character. It's part of who you are, uh, the way that you express yourself uh, and the way that you live your life. If you have a big car with a lot of towing capacity, because that's how you live your life, like that's kind of a part of your identity then. And so it's really important to take care of that thing or customize it the way you see fit. eBay Motors has everything you need to maintain your vehicle and level it up to peak performance, whether it's roof racks and exhaust kits and LED headlights or uh, something a little bit more nitty gritty under the hood that it needs. eBay Motors has you covered with over 122 million parts. With eBay Guaranteed Fit, your part is guaranteed to fit your ride every time or your money back. So keep your ride or die alive at ebaymotors.com. Eligible items only, exclusions apply. eBay Guaranteed Fit, only available to U.S. customers. Today's episode is also brought to you by Game Time, the best place in the world to find last-minute tickets. And whether you're just a terrible planner like me and you just procrastinate or you're maybe spontaneous or you're just looking for a deal, buying last-minute has never been easier with game time, you can save up to 60% buying last minute tickets for sporting events like, say, a Timberwolves game or comedy shows, theater, whatever else. Uh, you can save a lot of money doing that because by the time you're kind of inching up toward the beginning of an event, even an hour into the event, sometimes people are just trying to get rid of their tickets and game time can pass those savings off to you. They also have a lowest price guarantee. The Game Time Guarantee credits you 110% of the difference if you find those same tickets, same section, same row, somewhere else at a better price. Game Time says, no, 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 we'll just beat that for you. So go ahead and challenge them on that. See if you can't beat it. And with Game Time ticket coverage, your purchase is covered with the most flexible customer service policy in the ticketing industry. So take the guesswork out of buying tickets with Game Time. Download the Game Time app, create an account, and use code Locked On NFL for twenty dollars off your first purchase. Terms apply. Again, create an account, uh, create an account, and redeem code L O C K E D O N N F L for twenty dollars off. Download Game Time today. Last minute tickets, lowest price guaranteed. Thank you so much for making Lockdown Vikings your first listen of the day. And when you're done here, go check out the Lockdown Minnesota Sports YouTube page. They got a 24-7 live stream of all things Locked On Minnesota Sports, including this show, Locked On Timberwolves, uh, Locked On Twins, Wild, Gophers, and all of the roundtables from the Locked On Minnesota Sports channel proper. Very uh, excited about that 24-7 stream. Go go flick that thing on and forget about it. Put it in the background. You'll have all, all of the Minnesota sports stories that you'll ever want. But this Minnesota sports story uh, is particularly compelling to me right now because it reveals quite a bit. For one, for all of the time, I spent two months essentially operating under the assumption that the Vikings were going to force their way into the top five for a quarterback come hell or high water. Uh, either they were going to find a way to get to three, and if they weren't going to get to three, they were going to get up to four to five, they were going to do it. Because there was so much reporting around that time that the Giants were going to take J.J. McCarthy if he fell. So if you want J.J. McCarthy, I got to get up to four or five. And that both Arizona and the Chargers were very open to getting up to four or five. So for me, I was like, okay, easy deal. Got it. All right, they're going to do it then. Because they're not going to just like sit there and settle for a quarterback they don't love. They very clearly love McCarthy. That was extraordinarily evident throughout the entire draft process in a way that I don't think, I think it was too prolific to fake. Like, I don't think you can keep that up. Uh, they just, they had absolutely no intention of, of keeping a secret how much they loved J.J. McCarthy. And how much they love Drake May. But yeah, they love J.J. McCarthy the whole time. And they're not going to let this guy just get like sniped in front of them. 
So I kind of operated under the assumption they were going to go up to four or five. Well, Tom Pelissero on the Rich Eisen so uh, on the Rich Eisen show said, "Nope, never was going to happen. They were never going to pay. If they were going to pay that exorbitant price, they were only going to do it for Drake May, and for J.J. McCarthy, they were going to play the board. Um, and a big part of that is that they were calling New York's bluff. They said, "We don't buy it. We don't buy that your a year, your your extension that you just signed this guy to." uh, is, hasn't even kicked in yet. We don't buy that. You're gonna, uh, abandon him after a season. He only played eight games of, and he got hurt, but he's going to be healthy. And maybe those eight games weren't great, but like, we don't buy that. You're, you're the, the same brass, the same group of people is just going to move on. And they called that bluff. And according to Pelissero, that meant your heart races a little bit when you're up at six. When the Giants are up, they take Malik neighbors. And you go, okay, we were right. But you you had to be. If they were wrong about that, that would have been the catastrophic misery. That would have been the thing. You go back in the debrief meeting and you ask, what went wrong? We ended up with a quarterback we're not as happy with. What went wrong? Nah, we shouldn't have called the Giants bluff. But they were right, so they get to take their victory lap on that instead. And the victory lap is a particularly lucrative one because instead of trading multiple firsts, they only end up trading a couple of day three picks and they get a day three pick back. Uh, they, that's way easier, way, way easier to stomach. But as things sort of um, progress down the board after the, the, the Giants take neighbors, the Titans, they just sit and pick their tackle. OK, they were never really involved in this. And then you have the Falcons up. And the Falcons take Michael Penix. Now, they... I'll talk more about the Vikings and their kind of relationship to this decision in a second, but in the the broad strokes of things, the way that Pelissero put it, this was stunning to everyone. There were reports. I mean, Ian Rappaport said not long before the draft, hey, you know, watch out for Penix at eight. And everyone just laughed that off because, come on, of course they wouldn't. And it wasn't necessarily an evaluation on Penix, but more just it's Atlanta six weeks ago. They signed a guy. They they got Kirk Cousins. They just gave a guy one hundred million dollars. Why would they draft a quarterback uh, in, in the top 10? And if you're interested in this, by the way, like the the draft process for the Falcons sort of finding their way into this Michael Penix decision. Absolutely fascinating the way that it sort of that they talked themselves into it over time from kind of being as skeptical as everyone. Well, you know, he's been hurt and he's older and you know, there's this and there's that. Uh, and I mean, I, like, look, consensus had this guy in the third. It hasn't been the second round quarterback. I had him as a second round quarterback. Uh, but the Falcons are at his pro day. He runs a good 40. And for whatever reason, and this is not, this is like Albert Breer, like talked, I think it's Albert Breer at Monday morning quarterback, like talked to Falcons brass who were like, this is how it went. Like this is as basically as straight from the, from the horse's mouth as it comes, uh, that they saw him run that 40 and went, oh no, we're not going to be able to get him in the second round. Like the Falcons were interested in taking him, which is pretty funny considering, uh, Kirk Cousins, opinion on teams drafting quarterbacks while he's there he's he's their QB he doesn't like it and I reiterate I think I talked about this I can't remember if it was on this show or maybe it was on the part, football party but like th part of Kirk Cousins not taking a contract with the Vikings was the knowledge that the Vikings were drafting a QB whether he signed or not and they they were upfront about that they said Kirk we're drafting a QB so if you don't like that you know we can we can shut this off. And like that absolutely affected his decision. He does not want to be a part of a team that drafted a quarterback. And now he is. So that's really interesting. Either the Falcons didn't know that or they disregarded it. But either way, that is a rocky relationship from the start. Like I do not envy Aaron Freeman over there. A lot of Falcons having to to like wade through that nonsense. But I digress. Um, they basically had themselves under the impression the, the Falcons that, uh, you know, Penix wasn't going to fall to round two. So they're sitting there at pick eight. They tried to trade down with somebody else who maybe wanted to jump and take JJ McCarthy, but they wanted too much and they, they weren't satisfied with any of the deals. So they said, all right, it's going to be a reach, but let's just take him. And they did it. 
So there's a couple of major bullet dodged there for the Vikings. One is uh, that very much like if the Falcons weren't greedy, if they were a little less greedy, they might have ended up getting jumped. And maybe it would have been the Vikings trading up to eight for J.J. McCarthy instead of 10. Like it could have been the Vikings, but it could have been the Raiders, could have been the Broncos trading up to get uh, J.J. McCarthy instead. So there's a little bit of a like, whoa, that could have gotten real spicy if the Falcons had a different mentality. And if the Falcons had a different mentality uh, and instead took J.J. McCarthy, that would have absolutely caught the Vikings off guard. They... Nobody had the Falcons picking a quarterback. That's what Pelissero said. That was like the core of what Pelissero said was everyone was stunned by this. The Falcons had their their pro day thing and then they talked about it and they kind of had their thing and they were going to get Penix and they were going to prioritize that. And nobody really thought that that was serious when it leaked out. Everybody wrote it off as a smokescreen. And of course they did. Uh, but what that meant is that the Vikings, I don't think were prepared for that possibility and they're just lucky that they didn't take the Vikings' next favorite guy, which is what I'll talk about next, that Pelissero confirmed that the Vikings had J.J. McCarthy over Mike Penix. Uh, and that that certainly, obviously, that wasn't a universal opinion. The Falcons do disagree. But that's going to be a very interesting comparison to watch now moving forward. Today's episode is brought to you by Monopoly Go. A twist on the old classic board game Monopoly. Come on, you remember sitting there around your living room, flipping the table over when you landed on Park Place a fourth time. Uh, you can team up with all... You, there's so many new things in this game. You can uh, team up with friends for timed tournaments. You can work together to build up each other's boards. It's like a co-op mode. You can unlock prizes like unique stickers, playing pieces like cosmetics and stuff. Uh, and you can even get like rack up like big multiple multipliers for everything you win, rent frenzies, all kinds of stuff, not to mention heisting your your friends, stealing their money and, uh, and even wrecking your competitors properties with wrecking balls, all sorts of fun. That is just scratch and surface of what you can get at Monopoly Go. So go download it now free on Google Play or the App Store. Game on. So really, there were three nuggets from the uh, Pelissero thing that I found interesting. One was that there was a final Hail Mary offer when the Patriots were on the clock uh, to, to move up for Drake May, but the Patriots had very much already decided, so they pretty much hung up on it. Two was that the Vikings just sort of put all their chips and all their faith in their belief that the Giants were bluffing and they were right about that and they were rewarded for that. And three is that he 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 gave up the big board. He said they had J.J. McCarthy over Mike Penix, but he made sure to include too that it was close, that they they weren't, they didn't, the Vikings didn't have as big of a gap, for example, as I did. I, I have probably a full round between those two guys. The Vikings don't seem to have agreed. So in the world where somebody did say trade up with Atlanta instead, maybe Atlanta gets less greedy and the Raiders trade up and they take JJ McCarthy. And although apparently they liked Penix. Uh, so if somebody else or whoever uh, trades up and takes McCarthy instead, and then the Vikings are up at 11 and Penix is on the board, they would have done it. That's the idea that I got out of that, that if, if it were just Mike Penix, McCarthy's gone, the top three guys are gone that they wouldn't, it wouldn't have been a Will Levis situation where they just look at that and they say, mm, not a first round guy, let's just take an edge rusher. Uh, and that's basically what they did last year with Will Levis and Jordan Addison on the board where they went, eh, not a guy. But as an aside to uh, Kevin O'Connell, I forget where he did this, so I apologize, but he was in some interview or other and he talked about being the QB killer a little, maybe it was just a press conference, but he said, you know, I was the QB killer a little bit in the past where if he just didn't like a guy, he would be like, no, that's like that guy. He's not our guy or he's not a, or he would take that guy out of the first round. And he he would sort of throw the weight of his opinion at, as head coach on that and sort of veto a quarterback that he didn't like. And he was very clear that he was like telling the story of a time where that happened. But of course, he wasn't going to say the name. Uh, but I would I would be hard pressed to believe it was anybody but Levis that he was talking about there because he has such an in. 
uh, or had such an in on Will Levis because Liam Cohen is offensive coordinator at Kentucky for, I think, two years of Will Levis playing. Very close friends with Kevin O'Connell. And should he become available, I would not be surprised to see Liam Cohen end up on the Vikings staff. Uh, it's very close friends with a guy that, like, was his offensive coordinator at, at was Levis's offensive coordinator at Kentucky. He's like, if anybody knows him, it's this guy. Uh, and sure enough, the Vikings had him fall all the way to him at three at, at 23 picked Addison. We move on. He's a Titan, whatever. Good luck, Tennessee. The reason I bring that up is as context here that Kevin O'Connell did not do that veto thing with Mike Penix. He liked Mike Penix enough to take him at 11. That would have been a thing I disagreed with heavily. Didn't happen. We don't need to, to go into it. Uh, but that's where the Vikings were at. Uh, and so the fact that they traded up to get McCarthy is now like now the, the context of that says a lot about kind of by omission what they think about Bo Nix. Uh, and, and that they probably didn't have a first round grade on Bo Nix. If they did, they probably would have been much more comfortable risking the Jets trading out. So now there's this Jets trade, right? And this is the other thing to talk about. Obviously, there's the clip from from Sean Payton kind of saying, oh, we called the Jets and like told them that, you know, we were going to maybe think about it. And uh, just just to get, kind of throw some some I don't know, just to poison the well a little bit or something like that, which is, is very funny because it's like you're talking, oh, cool, cool. You cost the Vikings like a fifth, like whatever. But we did get an inside look at that trade from the Jets perspective that the Jets released like a draft video which is always going to be very like edited to, you know, move around the the machinations of that negotiation. Uh and and you're going it's going to be really always really limited about what they let you have. But you have this like g- this giddy Joe Douglas uh that is, you know, negotiating this trade. Robert Sal is like, "All right, it's free money," which is like very true for the Jets, very fair for the Jets. The Jets don't need a quarterback. There's a quarterback needy team. Yeah, man, you guys can come up a a, a pick and take your QB and we're still going to get our guy and we just kind of get free draft picks. Yeah, sure. Like of course they're going to be happy about that. Of course they're going to do that. Uh and the Vikings of course know that going in too. It's not like they're g- getting caught off guard by any of this. Uh but it also from that video, there's not much of an indication that there's like bitters here that it really does seem like the Vikings are maybe the only the only bitter the other thing here is um so we we talked about this a bunch on lockdown NFL uh which I'm on that that on Tuesdays on uh the lockdown NFL channel I'm on that with Ross Jackson who does lockdown Saints so he covered Sean Payton for years and we were talking about it there and he's like yeah Sean Payton's like notorious liar lies all the time just to your face and he's like not not apologetic so I don't really know what to make of that. I also don't really care what to make of that. The, the way Pelissero put it, I think, is plenty nuanced and a decent enough conclusion to run with, which is like, you're just being safe, right? It's one thing to have a bluff on the table and it costs you multiple first rounds to 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 fold, right? If you're, if you're going to trade up past the Giants, it costs you multiple first rounders, right? So there's like a way bigger stakes. So you call that bluff because it can save you a lot of resources. Like you're taking a risk, but there's a, there, there's a lot of resources on the other end of that risk. If you take a risk with the jets, even if you don't believe the Broncos, uh, this is again, the thing where you don't get to know ahead of time. Like it doesn't see, it does seem like Sean Payton was telling the truth that the Broncos were not interested in trading up. And I don't know if anybody was interested in trading up. So the Vikings might've been negotiating with somebody, but how sure could they have been about that? How, how like how worth it is it to risk being wrong about that? Even if you think it, even if you were right, how worth it is it to risk being wrong when the cost to just insure it is so comparatively low when it comes to a quarterback? That cost is going to fade into the ether of our imaginations. We will not care. And I think it's pretty worth it to me to just be just to be extra. Look, man. We already had one team that was not QB needy. Take a QB off the board here. Let's not risk something completely insane, like the Colts coming up or something random. Let's not risk even that. Just go up and get your guy. And they take J.J. McCarthy. It's absolutely fascinating the level of detail that we got in like a five-minute clip from Tom Pelissero. I'll link it uh, in the show notes and yell at me if I forget. But uh, fascinating the level of detail that we got from that, from Mike Reese, 
the idea that you know the 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 trades that the Vikings offered and then what they refused to offer and then the way that they just sort of watched that board come down uh very exciting stuff to understand but now that we have JJ McCarthy we can put Drake May away you know we can put Michael Penix away those guys are not viking now JJ whether we like it or not whether you like it or not whether I like it or not it's JJ McCarthy and it's not anybody else um so here's what's going to happen uh, as you understand because there wasn't a show yesterday there's not going to be a show tomorrow there will be a show Friday got a lot of guests coming up a lot of interviews where we'll talk about these draft picks we'll talk about Dallas Turner JJ McCarthy some of the other guys in the class of in in the rookie class too uh a lot of really fun conversations I've already recorded most of them really fun conversations pretty excited to air them uh but they're going to be Monday Wednesday Friday now for the next couple of weeks and then on May 20th I'll be back in the United States and I will be able to uh, continue on five days a week with the Everyman series, talking about the journey to the NFL for all of these players, all of the new Vikings. I think there's 44 of them, so we got work to do, and I'm excited to do it with you. I'll see y'all for that, and as always, Skull.